Thought we'd take a minute to talk about Windsor One Colonial Revival trim. So we've got a project on the go here at the house. This trim here is for uh, two bedrooms, part of the kitchen and the upstairs hallway. So there's a fair pile of wood here. This is, uh, I'm in Canada, and there's, uh, the way you import it is you go through one outfit and then they deliver it to you. And they're very good to work with, whether you buy it in Canada or the States, doesn't really matter. I think it gets distributed probably part way down the supply chain and then you get it from whoever the main distributor of the region is. But uh, anyway, so they talk about the quality of the wood and everything and I thought I'd take a minute just to, to look it over. When I initially got it I was kind of annoyed but I'm getting over things a bit now. But I don't feel that the wood really met my expectation from when it left the Windsor One factory because things are going to happen to the wood as it's getting delivered so it gets moved in the winter and it's going to get a bit stained and what have you that's not the factory's fault so uh, we'll take a look at it but I'm happy I got the wood it's nice thick profile you wouldn't be able to buy it here anywhere I tried to get a local place to make it and then he was having trouble getting the poplar to do it this is uh, white pine, but uh, poplar white pine. I'm not sure what the details are on which one is better or worse or what, when you would want to use one or the other. But that's kind of like the two types of trim typically you would use aside from MDF and then hardwoods like oak or maple or something. But for uh, paint grade, that's uh, the two main options. So when you look at it, the paint, it will have some cracks in it you'll have to deal with so it's not like you're going to nail it on and spot fill it and uh, spray it there's going to be more work than that I found with some of the really long lengths of some of the pieces if you lift it from one end it, if you were to move it quick it feels like it's going to break but it, that hasn't happened I haven't had anything open up on it the way it's made it's finger jointed across this dimension but then you'll see some of them they're glued down the long length of it and that's not finger jointed on that profile which may or may not be a problem just pointing it out we'll go upstairs where I've been doing some work and we'll have a look at that so I noticed that like when you watch Gary Katz doing his videos he'd always chop off like six inches of wood before he did any work with it and I'm like man what is going on and it, sometimes that's how far you got to chop it off before you get like a nice profile. There's going to be dingers and imperfections. Some of the uh, this profile here, the picture hanger, I've noticed has some chatter on it. So I'm going to have to sand it down quite a bit to make it work out good. But uh, yeah, so the wood is dirty. It was moved in the winter. So that's just the way it is, unfortunately. I was hoping to just slap it on and then not paint it for some period of time, but that's not going to work out like that. Sometimes you'll find like cavities near the finger joints where uh, it was a blowout and it's painted over. So you know that they have actually had that issue and they knew about it and carried on with uh, shipping it. So your painter or yourself or whoever is doing the final work can deal with that. But I was sort of anticipating because of uh, the price and the way they talk about the product that would be perfect. But I guess that's not realistic because that's just not the way it is. So, so we'll take a look upstairs. Yeah, so we'll go upstairs and take a look at some of the profiles. So my house unfortunately has small doors and they're in the corners and there's not a good solution for putting in proper three foot doors. So outside of the corner, so I'm kind of stuck with them. So here is going to be a problem for me. And for whatever reason, the top of the doors aren't even the same height. So I've got to rip that door frame out and go over it. So this is how I got things set up to cut. So you'll have to take a look at your saw and see like there's uh, the cutout on the back of the wood. So depending on where it's sitting, it can wobble. 
So for the base, that could be a problem. I don't think this saw is ideal for that. I think the base is gonna be hanging off the edge and kind of floppy. And when you try to marry those up on miters, if it's been hanging off on an angle when you cut it, it's going to show, so that's not really ideal. But yeah, this is just a little baby saw that I've got. I sold my 12 inch saw because it was way out of whack. I just marketed it as a, a framing saw and got rid of it. So for tools and stuff to use when working with this wood, it's pretty simple. You can get a, like a reveal gauge if you want or you just use your little baby square. Um, so I'm trying to do a bull nose stool on mine here. So I've just been working through Gary Katz's information. You can watch him and then there's Inside Carpentry. There's another person who's got some good videos on doing trim. And his videos are kind of like a, a copy of Gary Katz. It's all the same equipment. It's just more modern. It's a younger guy. So you can see some of the stuff. Having one of these Franklin stud detectors is nice because it can actually give you a visual of where the studs are. There's a wire in there too, which makes sense because there's an electrical switch on the other side of the wall. So that's uh, better than the old style where you're trying to mark the inside or the sides of each of the studs. So here's where I'm kind of slapping things together. So before I had a big granite top uh, table saw. Good luck getting that upstairs. So I got this little contractor guy here. Seems like it's pretty good as ripping through wood. I'm using some uh, cyanic glue for some of the work. But trying to use wood glue, I haven't done that before. This is some kind of PVA glue, I think. Backfix D3. Don't know if it's any good or not. But so you can see I've been using uh, the Jim Chestnut style clamps. So if you don't have these sitting flat on the saw when you cut it, you're going to get a funny opening or all kinds of weird reveals going on. So I, I would have preferred to get the Jim Chestnut clamps, but I couldn't really reach him being Canadian. So I went with uh, Wood River and I got the same price. I'd rather buy the proper stuff, but so be it. So for the uh, different styles of wood, you can see them here. So that's the casing, baseboard, not quite a quarter round kind of thing, the picture frame. So these are all three quarter right here. And that works for the uh, door stop as well as for the uh, crown molding as well. You use one on each wall the wall and ceiling for that. So I was kind of playing around with the different thicknesses. So for whatever reason, this quarter round sits proud of the casing, which is kind of annoying. I wish I could have went a little bit further with the thickness of the casing, but you can deal with that for what have you. Um, then if you wanted to like terminate this into this, you can do it if you're that lucky. That's not gonna happen in this room. So, with that trim here, I'm gonna have to scribe it and get it into the corners best I can. And for the baseboard, I'm gonna do, I'm not sure what you would call it, but I'm gonna have it terminate into the wall, kind of like when you would do a return under the bull nose, but I'm not doing like a, a 90 degree return. I'm gonna do a 45 degree turn so that it's sorta of going into the corner like that. I saw that in one of Gary Katz's videos there. I thought that was pretty smart. So I'll be doing that. Cause like you wouldn't be able to, it wouldn't look right like such. So you have to end it on a, like a 45, but still return it into the wall to deal with it. I put some writing on the wood when I brought it inside to acclimate it so that it's been inside the house for about two weeks before I mess with it. So I just got some uh, T11 smart side siding on some uh, 
legs here. These are Bora XT Speed Horse. They're pretty good. Sometimes the leg pops out. And if you gotta be careful, you don't get your finger caught in it or something. They're pretty handy. You're working with wood and steel, they're pretty strong. So for this room, well for all the rooms, what I'm trying to do is make the uh, windows so that they're, the trim is removable because the windows in this house are all garbage. But I wanted to do the trim now. This all started because I wanted to put new curtains in the rooms. So I ended up painting the rooms and getting some drywall work done. And now I'm making the uh, trim for the room just so I could put some curtains up. But then I can tuck wiring into the jam here so that I can have a, a control of the uh, curtains later on or whatever I put in. But anyway, back to the, uh, the woodworking here. So you can see right here, there's a joint. I had to cut off about six inches of this piece of wood. This joint was not very good for whatever reason. The, the paint on the wood isn't, uh, it was really loose. And I, well, I've been at an MDF factory before. They just fire all the wood through like uh, something that's pouring paint onto it. And then it pops out the other end. It's like a chalk-like substance. And I don't feel that uh, the wood on here is really any better, or sorry, the paint is any better than what you get on an MDF board, to be honest. So you can see this piece of wood's mated to the other one. It's got the same kind of cut in it. There's another one there. This is funny, it looks like it's like a zebra pattern, but that's actually the um, finger jointing kind of coming in. You can't see it from the outside. I bet if you put a bright enough light on it, you'd see the finger jointing in there, but that's what's going on there. I was hoping that I could mix and match these two profiles of trim for like corners here. Cause like if I'm gonna scribe off the whole last chunk of the wood here. Why wouldn't I just use this? But they don't match. So this is meant for like the underneath of a bull nose. Kind of like that. And then you return that into the ball. But uh, they decided not to make them identical for whatever reason. Well, that's too bad. But I can still work with that. So you can see the wrinkles in the paint here, I would believe. You can see the, the clumpy paint on the end. They always say to paint the edges before uh, you finish things up, so you can see. It. They only have it, like their markings on like the one by stock for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, that one's fairly dirty because of the shipping what have you. But it seems to work good, like you can cut it and it doesn't blow out and pine. It's quite straight. I did notice that uh, I had to, I'm gonna have to bend this stock a little bit to get everything to line up. At first I thought one of my boards was long but I realized it wasn't actually long. It's just that uh, things aren't quite lined up. One of the boards is bent or warped a little bit, but that's going to be okay. So what do I got in here for tools? Just a uh, table saw, dust mask, some uh, super glue. Just kind of like just piecing these together. Then I'll start ripping the trim off of these doors here. And uh, I think that's it. I don't know if there's anything you need to know about the profiles. Um, downstairs, I've installed the smoke detectors kind of on the wall. And I sort of wish I had known I was going to put the picture hanging detail on there. I would have adjusted the height a bit so they don't interfere. In this house, the window heights, the door heights don't match. So it's going to be a bit of a pain. But we'll work through it. I did a video on uh, primer, not the Promarf, that's the ceiling paint there, that's like a flat. But uh, 
if you want to look at that. I wasn't super happy with the um, Sherwin Williams high build paint. This is actually the third coat, and it did finally turn white. And this is uh, two coats in this room here. I just kept painting until I got rid of it, and I won't buy it again. Um, yeah, so if when you're framing your house, don't put the doors in the corner. It's super annoying. And then don't put your switches so close to the door jams. Like this one, I got to move this guy over about a half an inch in order to make that work out. And this bathroom here, there would have been room to put the door further over there. I don't know why they would do this, but <laughs> it is what it is. Like that's a better placement for a door. Like why wouldn't they have done that on this end? Uh, baffling. But here, that door, not much you can do with it unless you were to move, make the hallway longer or whatever, rejig things a bit. But I guess that's part of doing work. It's all custom. You don't just buy a kit and throw it in your house. So uh, I think that's all I have to say about the Windsor one. Like I had huge expectations, expecting perfection. And when I got it, it's not quite there. There's some lumps in the paint sometimes too on the edges. This one is actually quite good where I'll have to like sand it down. So there's going to be a bit of smoothing and filler and stuff to make it perfect. Let's see if this guy had it or not. There's just there's some lumps. You may or may not see them here. Like that doesn't pass my requirement. I got to sand them down before I spray out the room. Then if you get the uh, picture hanger, you can do a freeze behind it. So you would spray the hanger, the wall, and the, uh, oh gosh, I can never think of the name of that stuff you put in the, the corner, the wick. Anyway, so you paint all that in one shot. So if you don't have that, you'll end up having to um, only paint the uh, picture hanger mold and then paint up to the ceiling which is unfortunate because uh, it would be nicer just to do all of it so I should probably get the uh, last piece of trim to go up there in the corner. Forgive me for not knowing the name of it. This is the first house I've ever owned where I've actually had that trim. And I was thinking about maybe doing something kind of fun with these corners. Kind of build them out and make them look nice because there's two of them here and they're... so that's the bathroom in there and then this I believe is a soil stack hidden in there and not too clear as to what it is. I haven't ripped it open. But uh, yeah, otherwise like the thickness and the heights and everything all works good. It's just the poor framing in the corners that's super annoying. And then like the, uh, the sliding doors are a different height than the uh, man doors and they're a different height than the window. So if you're doing a house from scratch, that would be something to ponder how you could get them all lined up at the same height. So I think that is about it. We're not going to go into any real installation of things. So uh, thank you for watching. So it's been some time since I did the original video about the Windsor One trim here. So I thought uh, before I upload it, I'll do a final kind of thing about it. So things worked out quite well with it. It's uh, house is not entirely complete. I was able to work out some solutions for some funny install details like with this uh, cabinet recess here so I had to uh, do a reveal and put an extra piece of wood in here to kind of space it out um, I didn't do a taper on that so it's got a bit of a gap on the top I had to do some returns here so to do a 90 what you'll do is like a a two twenty-two and a half and a forty-five to cut back to uh, make that detailed, and then you snip off the nose where you feel it's about right, so that it's uh, kind of looks a bit better than it disappearing into the wall. You could do that as well and just move the whole thing over, but in this case, I had a a space to uh, cut off the nose and make it look like that. Um, I used uh, 
GRK finishing screws. I don't have any sitting around here right now. And built the frames like that. So for the window frames, you'll see I didn't face nail them at all. So I have them held in by screws. Because my concern is that I'm going to have to replace these windows at some point. And I didn't want to lose all of the trim work that I did. Or it's going to get damaged when I take it out. But so be it. I'll still be able to uh, remove the uh, screws. So there's probably 12 screws holding it in, depending on the location. And uh, that's good. I am not a fantastic finished carpenter, so you're going to see gaps and what have you. And then depending on how the drywall was done, there's going to be issues there as well. So that's going to be for the caulking. Like I'm not a finished carpenter by any means. I'm not a carpenter. More of a weekend warrior. So you'll see some unacceptable gaps. When this floor gets removed, we'll put in the uh, corner round at that point. I did have to um, change the uh, style for the uh, window cranks because with the uh, wide bottom plate here, you couldn't spin it. You could get extensions or these thumb things are fine considering we never open these windows. I don't even have screens in them. That's good enough for me. Um, yeah, it's a bit difficult to get all this in. I, Carpentry is never perfect, so then the trim guy has to figure out solutions along the way. For the bull nose here, they didn't make a, a wide enough bull nose, so I had to extend it, which is not ideal, but it is what it is. Um, I vastly underestimated the amount of uh, picture hanger trim to purchase. It did dawn on me that in most cases the windows are taller than the doors or vice versa, but in, in the end, um, what well, I think what I had done was I bought the same amount of picture hanger as I did for uh, the baseboard, and that is not right because you have way more picture rail space than uh, baseboard in a lot of cases. So I came up short a few sticks on that and we'll show you a, a bit different areas of the house where you can see how that kind of played out. I'll do another video on these blinds. They're a, a whole separate project. So uh, trim worked out good. I got a new baseboard heater for this location. This is a Stell Pro, kind of a medium density heater. They are making some like really high density heaters where they make really hot air coming out of them and it's dangerous to it'll damage the uh, paint and uh, so anyway if you're looking for baseboards this is a kind of a good solution where you can get the, the height separation from the window tra treatment and the uh, heater so that's about it I was able to use most of the uh, wood that I'd purchased I don't think I threw any away I uh, was able to make it work for the most part, so that is good. This uh, the trim is wide, right? So you got to be creative in the corners. You'll see that upstairs, especially. So I had to smack out a piece of uh, concrete here so that I could kind of keep uh, a reasonable width. You could try to uh, scribe that and cut it and fit it. But that seemed like not a great thing to do. Wouldn't be very fun. Somebody had tried to do that down here. And uh, it's an option. So that's about it for this floor. I wanted to do the uh, picture frame across here. And I ran out. So that is kind of what I got. For upstairs, you can see going up, you got a nice wide profile on the trim. This is one piece I didn't put in yet. I was trying to figure out a, a nice way to end this thing and kind of put this in and what have you, but haven't quite sorted that out yet. 
And sometimes you stop at the 90% mark and don't finish anything, right? So here is how I solved it. So this one I did run into the wall. I'm not really happy with this profile being here. What I want to do, this is like a separate thing for trim, but is like I want to have a, a picture frame coming across, picture rail, then go up and terminate in this area somehow versus continuing it. I'm not really sure what to do. Open to suggestions. The trim here worked out good. There's a lack of framing here. There used to be a door and uh, it's kind of lumpy as a result. So for the uh, picture rail, I found that maybe because it's closer to the eye level, you'll see where it's wavy. I wasn't too excited about that. So I was kind of shimming it out when I'm nailing it to kind of uh, make it so it's not super wavy. So you can see here where I shot across the tops of the doors. And then for a staircase, you use way more trim for the picture rail because you don't have any baseboard in that area. So I came up kind of short there. Let me just close the door here for some privacy. This was uh, probably the toughest part of the whole deal here is that these doors were put in too close to each other. I don't know, the past is the past. Nowadays they still do it, but <laughs> if you're building a house, put in all 36 inch doors and uh, make sure they're a foot from the corner the end. You'll figure out why if you don't. So this uh, was pretty tough to make this work out because like in behind here there's a void like it's not perfect 90 in there. I had to rip out this door frame and start over. It was uh, it had some issues. You can see it, this door was actually cut for the previous door frame and you can see what the issue is there right. So it was like a parallelogram door. It was not very good. So dropping this down in, into the carpet worked out good. So I've got all the cord around for this, but I don't really need it. So I'm a bit unsure what to do there. I did reinstall all of the uh, door stop in place of what was there previously. And I think that looks quite nice. I'm trying to kind of fix everything because like this door here was all like square 90s like they just like milled down two by fours to make the trim for this door so I'm trying to make this look a bit better then we'll take a look in one bedroom it's just full of uh, stuff at the moment so um, in here it all worked out I kind of ran the picture rail like an eighth below the top of the uh, window frame because you're not going to put pictures in the middle of a window I think. Well you could if it was stained glass but anyway didn't do it that way and that kind of gave me a reasonable compromise for heights so I could shoot across the tops of all the doors and uh, kind of get things done. These little jut outs are a pain in the butt to deal with them so you'll find funny stuff when you're working on your house as well. So I'm pretty happy with the product. There was some dings and stuff that were not from the uh, shippers because they were actually within the uh, plastic sealant. So if somebody had been walking on some of the boards before sealing them up and shipping them. So that's kind of annoying. But we uh, got to use most of it. That's sort of what matters, I guess. I have to come up with a solution for this uh, attic opening here. I didn't have enough material to do it, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so that was my kind of spring project for this year. Now it's September. And like there's, so what I did was whenever I had like a big ding, I kind of just marked it with uh, a pencil so that when I'm uh, detailing it out, I'll be, uh, be obvious where they are. 
yeah, to make it easier to paint and get a good product final finish on it. Doing the uh, coping on the corners was fantastic. I just used a, a coping foot and that is the way to go. I've never coped before. I feel guilty for not coping previously because it's like easier than doing uh, <laughs> 45s. So that's the way to go. If you can cope in uh, 45 degree corners, I'd like to know how to do that, or I guess 135s. But these are all coped in the, in the 90s and it's easy as slamming in there and they kind of heal themselves. So that's cool. The outside cuts, they are what they are. Again, like if you are careful when you're nailing it, you can keep them closed in a bit better than that. But uh, the depth of the profiles are nice just so you don't have the baseboard sticking out past the uh, door casing. I was happy with this. So I used the, uh, what do you call it? the uh, trim screws for the corners here and it worked out good so I have one going in from the side and one from the top and then I used a, uh, a fancy clamp for squeezing these together. I'll put a link in the details for the description to get it. I couldn't get the original ones from the guy that makes them in the States. They're uh, the clam clamps is what they're called but uh, so I went with the, some generic ones and they are quite good. I'm very happy with them. It's uh, the guy's own fault for not selling me product because I was ready to buy it from him at a higher price. So that's his problem and not mine. Um, yeah, so like I said, that was last spring's kind of project. So again, I'll get another truckload of trim delivered next year and keep working our way through the house. I still have a, a few rooms to do and uh, but it takes up a lot of space because of the length of it because it was filling up the uh, room there so I guess we'll uh, wrap it up there thank you for watching